evening. My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. Tonight, I want to speak to you about the decision by Luis Moreno Ocampo of the International Criminal Court to investigate NATO for alleged war crimes during the Libyan conflict. To give the veneer of respectability to the International Criminal Court whether this is uh, simply uh, window dressing or not, we must take it seriously and do our best to get the information into the International Criminal Court. How can the deaths of thousands of innocent Libyans killed at the hands of a foreign coup be avenged? How can large, powerful militaries be held accountable for their actions in steamrolling a small, weak country? You could say their motives were noble. Probably they weren't. But the actual mechanics certainly were not. Saif al-Islam and Saadi Gaddafi are both still being pursued, which adds insult to injury, really. Uh, the original charges fed to the United Nations, the ICC, from Jalil of the Transitional National Council via one of his uh, uh, cronies in uh, Switzerland have all been debunked by Doctors Without Borders. They claim that tens of thousands of people had already been killed and many other stories that were all debunked. So the basis of these charges <clears throat> is very weak. Um, and these men have lost three of their, uh, there's a total of three brothers left. Three have been killed. Uh, uh, their nieces and nephews have been killed. Their father was lynched and his corpse abused. Uh, and they're still being pursued, as well as losing their country <clears throat> to a group of Islamic extremists armed and trained by the United States, France, Qatar, the United Kingdom, and NATO in violation of the very charter, United Nations, 1973, uh, that they themselves wrote, the ultimate in cynicism, which prohibited arming of either side in the Civil War. Qatar has been the most egregious violator, claiming that they have hundreds of men on the ground with every single brigade in every single territory at all times. <clears throat> NATO has become the face of a corporatist monolith. When countries like Norway begin attacking African countries, this reminds one of international Western business driving a war machine, or as Dennis Kucinich said, international gangsterism. Nazism with a pretty face and lipstick dressed up as consumerism. Get us cheap oil and commodities, boys. We don't want to know how you did it. <clears throat> There are dozens of questions to be asked, and it is quite important that Ocampo uh, stated he would investigate NATO war crimes as well, TNC, NATO, and loyalists. It's a very important development. The key question is whether the architects of the overthrow of a government can be held culpable for the excesses of their proxy forces on the ground. Can NATO be held liable for TNC atrocities? They certainly should be. We need to raise money for legal preparation to submit to the International uh, Criminal Court. And the particular focus, in my view, should be the siege of Sirt as a crime against humanity and a war crime. The reports of NATO special forces on the ground violate United Nations 1973. The arming of the TNC violates United Nations 1973. The fact that Qatar freely admitted they had these troops on the ground violated UN 1973. Many other violations have occurred, but Sirt is the key open and shut case of a crime against humanity and a war crime. We need to have forensic experts go into Seert. The, the finding of 53 people who had been massacred at a hotel in a dish, uh, was actually done by the director of Human Rights Watch, which has been considered a apologist for NATO. <clears throat> Um, the city needs to be cordoned off. We need to know everything about this attack. The city of Sirte was utterly leveled, which is where I compare this to a Nazi war crime. This was an attack against the psychology of people who uh, supported the Libyan government. It was a terror attack. There was no need to conduct the attack. The Libyan loyalists had already been largely destroyed by NATO. The International uh, Committee of the Red Cross was not allowed to provide humanitarian assistance to the residents of Sirt, which is a violation of the Geneva Convention, as well as the written and unwritten laws of war, to starve to death people so they will uh, abandon their side in a civil war. Uh, there are reports, as especially when the people waiting outside of the city uh, were ready to abuse, arrest, and beat them as they came out surrendering. 
There are reports that Gaddafi's convoy was flying a white flag when the U.S. drone signaled a French missile attack. The city of Sirte was leveled, utterly leveled, saturation bombed, and, uh, and mortared, of course, and rocketed by uh, uh, larger and larger amounts of incoming weapons funneled in from Qatar and the West to the hands of this small group of insurrectionists. <clears throat> the loyalists had already been effectively disarmed. This was all after the fact. Uh, it was a punishment, collective punishment. Uh, so the only option at the moment to uh, open a uh, serious uh, criminal investigation other than suit yet uh, in, in Belgium, which is being conducted, uh, is indeed through the offices of the International Criminal Court, which do have jurisdiction over France and the United Kingdom, although the United States is not a signatory. Uh, nonetheless, uh, it will be a huge damnation to uh, those who have participated in the improper aspects of this assistance to the Libyan uprising uh, if we can get uh, proper conduct of an investigation in the International Criminal Court to investigate how many buildings were hit in Sirte, who was in them at the time, uh, how did uh, this collaboration occur uh, where the ICRC was not allowed into the city, and so forth. I plan to conduct a noted attorney tomorrow uh, but I certainly can't afford to pay very much of his time. And in uh, conclusion, I want to say to my mind, the really culpable parties are Susan Rice and Hillary Clinton, decision makers who claimed in public many times all sorts of nonsense about Libya. And of course, never once mentioned the fact that Libya had the highest standard of living in Africa, was the most advanced country in Africa. They never provided any balance, and they claimed that they had saved tens of thousands of lives, whereas in reality, they were killing tens of thousands of people. And they're not mere spokespeople like Victoria Nyland, but absolutely people who are in positions of power. I can't directly say that Obama is culpable. Uh, of course he is. But I want to target Susan Rice and Hillary Clinton because they were the point men, point women, of this uh, invasion. Without them, it couldn't have happened, couldn't have uh, succeeded. Uh, and bear in mind, uh, we have no evidence that the people of Libya supported this, and there was never an attempt to use diplomacy. In my view, the Libya uprising could have been triage using diplomacy. However, that was never the intent. In a Kissinger-esque realpolitik, Libya was to be sacrificed in the rush to have a client state between Tunisia and Egypt. Oil, strategic location, and the increased importance of raw materials in Africa drove this invasion. Humanity could have tried first to use talks to save free and fair elections in Libya now, if the world felt impelled to do so. <clears throat> in conclusion, I want to say that my ancestors, if you question my patriotism, fought in the Revolutionary War against an imperialist superpower. They fought against racism in the Civil War. Many blacks have been lynched in Libya even going so far as to marry the widow of a murdered abolitionist. The only other war my ancestors served in was in the Second World War, where my grandfather fought at Iwo Jima as a lieutenant commander of a destroyer escort. We fought against wars of choice, a Japanese war of choice, a Japanese war of regime change, Japanese wars of plunder. Since World War II, there has been no good war the U.S. has fought in. None of my ancestors or family have served in the military since, other than my uncle, who was a paratrooper in the 50s. One could take pride in standing down the Soviet Union, but not in bullying the dozens of small countries we have shoved our nose into the business of. Today, I can only serve you know, the original America by defanging the monster America. We must stop killing people in countries we cannot even find on the map and trade with them and defend our liberty here. Thank you, good luck, and good night, and please try to contact uh, various groups to help us get an investigation underway into the NATO crimes in Libya so that never again will a small uprising be used to justify a massive bulldozing of a society that is different from ours. Uh, just as we guard endangered species, we must be careful about crushing every alternative to uh, super capitalism left in the world. I'm not saying that they shouldn't have 
uh, more rights and uh, freedom of expression. But we need to be very cautious when crushing the life out of the last few societies that are different from ours.